Welcome back to Scholarships Cafe. My name is Dr. Olumi Wright Biology. I'm the founder of Scholarships Cafe. Uh, if you are new on the channel, I just want to say welcome to our community. Um, we empower students to find and apply for scholarships. We provide different uh, consulting packages in addition to a free database of scholarship like you can see if you're a returning subscriber thank you for your support and if you are new and you're yet to um subscribe to this channel i want to encourage you please subscribe and turn on your notification so that you get notified of every uh, new opportunities that uh, I share on this platform. Like I promised earlier, this year is going to be back to back. We'll try as much as possible to bring you real time scholarship information as well as tips to make your applications better. So today I'm going to South Korea. Uh, a lot of people know that I started my graduate um, journey from South Korea. So today I'll be talking about the fully funded GKS scholarship that uh, the application opened today. <laughs> back just a reminder there are tons of scholarship opportunities that you can actually explore on our website and blogs as well as resources like CV templates SOP templates and we want to be part of your journey uh, in 2024 like you can see the 2024 um, global career scholarship for graduate degree is currently on the website uh, it was posted today while the application actually opens today as well and you can have all the opportunities in New Zealand, United Kingdom, Japan, Canada, Taiwan and you can click on view hall to go to all the pages so I would encourage you to please make use of this um, website and if you haven't created an account you can create a position alert here or uh, update your profile so that you can get opportunities delivered into your inbox at no cost so let's go to south korea the korean government scholarship uh, for 2024 opens today um you know today calgary time um in 2024 the korean government aims to invite a whooping 2200 oh my god like last year i think it was about 1200 so they had an additional 1000 you know opportunities for international students to um explore in korea in 2024 so if you're looking for a master's or uh, phd postdoc opportunity i would encourage you to apply for the 2024 uh global scholarship 2024 global korea scholarship for graduate degree program so in this video I would be talking about how to apply which route you, it's important for you to apply um, how to submit a compelling application as well as what are the eligibility criteria so um, on this page we have the application guideline the application forms the university information as well as the promotion poster but for the sake of our viewers for the sake of our subscribers um you can check the description section of the video uh, i already have those forms um you know saved in a folder you can just download the folder and you can have access to the form so you probably don't have to go to this uh, website so let's start from the guideline how do you apply for the scholarship what are the quota um, in terms of embassy university um, what are the eligibility criteria um, what are the documents that you need to submit the application time the final announcement what does this scholarship actually um, cover so let's go to the guideline so the guideline um, note is the 2024 global career scholarship um, for graduate uh, degree um, the application was um, you know released today the application opens today this uh, 8th of um, February 2024 so we're going to check the objective the Korean government scholarship is designed to provide international students with opportunities about 11 years ago I had the opportunity to go to Korea to study at the master's level so um, if you're someone like me 
um, that is looking for opportunity, um, you know, to study at an higher education institution in Korea, I would encourage you to apply for this scholarship uh, for the master's degree. Um, it's a, a period, total period of three years, one year of Korean language program, two years of the degree program. For doctorate degree, um, if you have a master's already or you have a PhD and you want to do another PhD, um, you have one year of Korean language, which is compulsory. A lot of people do have this fear of the language barrier. And I usually tell them that, you know, the one year of a Korean language is fun. You will do nothing else than, you know, studying the language. And um, so one year of Korean language for the PhD and three years of your actual PhD program. And for research, you know, positions like postdocs, professors, you can have all from six months up to a year. So for the application track, we have, um, you know, we have the quota system. So they have the university track as well as the embassy track. So you could either apply through the embassy in your own country, uh, which allows you to apply to three universities or you apply through the university track, you have to look for a particular university in Korea that you think would fit into your profile and you can only apply to just one university. Again, we have two tracks for the application. You have to send your application document by DHL, FedEx or any other postal service in your own country to the Korean embassy or the university in South Korea. For the embassy track, we have a total of 800 um, you know, opportunities. And for the university track, we have a total of 1,400, you know, opportunities um, you can benefit from. It's a total of uh, 2,200. This year, they introduced the HIRT, which is the International Reconstruction Talent Program for Ukraine applicants. And so um, if you're from Ukraine, you might be qualified to also um, fall under this IRT, which is in addition to the quota given to Ukraine in the previous years. Um, the common questions people do ask me is that is the Korean government scholarship for both STEM or non-STEM, or is it for people in sciences? Actually, the simple answer is that the Korean government scholarship as for all feeds, you know, um, all feeds are offered by, you know, the GKS participating university. Not every university, not all university in Korea participate in the GKS. So you need to find out about, um, you know, the universities here. We have available university type A and the type B. Um, for the type A, you have Academic of Korean Studies, Aju University, um, Kangku University, Kangmin University, uh, Song Gang, so National, which is one of the best universities in Korea, KDI School of Public Policy for people interested in public policy or political science major. Um, type B, we have Andong National University, um, Jeonbuk, um, Korean University of Technology and Education, Korea Tech. We have the Peche University, um, Pugyong University, Shila University, University of Ulsan, Yungnam University, Daegu University, Daejeon University, where I add my, you know, um, master's uh, program. So the 2024 GKS scholarship, you have to apply to one of this university if you're applying through the university route or three of this university if you're applying through the embassy route. So it depends on you which of these universities uh, you want to take. For Japanese applicants, they have uh, available universities uh, type A, which is six, and type B, which is uh, 16. So basically, when you apply for any of this route, for um, available universities are you know, our uh, type A and B for the embassy track, for the university track, you either have, you know, type A or type B for general and the higher GKS, which we'll talk about that later for type B. So please ensure that you read this guideline to details while we are also um, going through the guideline together. Now they have RD, um, you know, institutions in Korea, um, which we'll talk about that briefly. So um, if you're interested in, um, you know, on R&D, um, you know, research and development, you have the opportunity to apply to specific university in Korea. So going to the quota system for the embassy track, we have each of the countries um, having a slot. So um, for general, we're expecting about 737 scholars from 140 countries or region. From Afghanistan, the total quota for the embassy route is four. So which means that 
only for uh, students who would eventually make uh, the quota for the MBC from Afghanistan. So if you imagine having 1,000 um, applicants applying through the embassy route in Afghanistan, they would eventually take four, which means that it's very competitive and you have to submit a compelling application. Um, for people from Cambodia, for instance, your total of 12 is for the embassy track. Um, let's go to um, Ghana. Oh, let's go to Ghana for Ghana. Ghana is not even on the embassy here. Um, from Nigeria, we have um, seven, um, total of seven through the embassy uh, track. If you are from Sex Republic, we have a total of two. If you're from Canada, we have a total of three. So if you are in Canada, I would encourage you to apply for the scholarship to enjoy the Korean food and Korean culture and the Korean education as well. Uh, Myanmar, a total of 17. If you're from Mo Morocco, a total of seven. If you're from Senegal, uh, a total of four. Serbia, four. Singapore, four. Rwanda, five. So um, for those countries, you can apply through the Korean embassy um, in this country. Um, we have Ghana. Ghana has a total of seven. I missed that earlier. Kenya has a total of seven as well. And um, Zimbabwe, total of one. Um, Syria, total of two. Um, Germany have a total of five. Greece, a total of one. Greenland, a total of one. Egypt, a total of five. South Africa, a total of two. If you're from Togo, a total of one applicant can make the embassy track. So you should decide, um, you know, appropriately which of this track um, you would like to apply um, to. For the university track, um, let's look at the note number of our people from Brazil, our total number of 13 from Ghana, total number of 8, um, Italy, total number of 4, Liberia, total number of 2, um, from Rwanda, total number of 8, Russia, wow, total number of 40, from the Philippines, a total number of 58, from Nigeria, total number of 11. So if you are applying through the university track, um, the vacancy, if you're applying through the university track, the total number allocated to Nigeria is 11, which means that if, um, you know, several Nigerians or several applicants from Nigeria were applied through the university track, they are competing for just 11 um, slots. So um, it's important to make your choice properly as well as prepare in advance. Maybe you have to reach out to professors in Korea to give you a supporting document. Uh, in most cases, if you, even if you don't get the scholarship, the professors can also offer you a funding. So um, 300 scholars from all countries across the globe will be selected for R&D and there are a list of R&D, University Haju Shanam Gyeongsang, NJ University, KAIST, Kemyeong University where I had my language program, Kungmin University, Korea Tech, Kyungbuk University, Seoul Tech, uh, Songkyun Ang University, Sokyun Sung, Kyung Kwan University. And so also we have 80 scholars from across the globe for the global network but this would actually be a recommendation from international organization and international education bodies. Um, for research um, field, for research quota, 15 scholars from 156 country or region, um, you know, will be selected. Um, research preference is uh, basically a recommendation from the Korean embassy. So let's go to the eligibility criteria. What do you need to have? What are the basic, um, you know, um, qualification and requirement for this program. If you would apply for the Korean Government Scholarship, all applicants must hold citizenship of NID designated countries that are invited to take part in the GKS program. Remember, like when I was talking about embassy quota and uh, you know university quota, each country is well listed. So you must be at least from one of those countries. Applicants must hold, uh, applicant parents must hold citizenship from Another country other than Korea, um, if applicant or their parents or dual citizenship, um, who has both Korean citizenship and citizenship of another country, such applicant are not eligible to apply. Applicant and their parents who had previously had Korean citizenship must submit documentation issued by the Korean government that proves their renunciation of Korean citizenship. Um, if an applicant's citizenship is changed during the selection process, he or she will be excluded from the evaluation. So kindly note that um, one, 
of the eligibility criteria is your nationality that must be um, actually captured in the list I showed for embassy as well as the university track. For the level of education covered, master's, doctorate, postdoctorate degree, exchange professor, as well as you know, program for education or science, culture, or international cooperation, um, they all have their minimum qualification, bachelor degree for master's, master's degree for doctoral, doctorate degree for postdoctoral. Exchange professors can have a minimum of masters, and if you are you know, going for a program for education, science or culture or international cooperation, you must have a master's degree. Now, there is a change this year. Uh, if you're expected to graduate by July 31st, 2024, you can also apply for the program with a certificate of expected graduation. You can get that from your school to show that uh, you will be graduating uh, by July 31st, 2024. Um, and you must submit your official graduation certificate to uh, the GKS by 31st of July 2024. Failure to do this will lead to the cancellation of your acceptance eventually if you get the scholarship. Now, how do you qualify for the scholarship in terms of grade? Um, for uh, the cumulative grade, um, you need, uh, for example, a previous degree for a uh, doctorate degree uh, applicant as a master's program. So your CGPA must be equal to 2.64 over 4, 2.80 over 4.3 or 2.91 over 4.4 or 3.23 over 5 because the scholarship is really competitive um the minimum qualification might not be sufficient enough but i'm not saying you should not apply but you know it's important to kind of apply caution because of, in most cases you have to notarize your document in the korean embassy or your ministry of federal um education or the Federal Ministry of Education, which might be custom intensive. So um, make sure you're, you're very confident that you want to apply for uh, this scholarship. For age limitations, you must be under 40 years of age. Um, academic professors and one of the official development assistant ODA recipient who are under 45 years of age are eligible to apply. So you can see the list of the ODA recipient country, including Afghanistan, Mexico, Moldova, Nigeria, um, Ghana, Grenada, Nepal, Rwanda. So this is for uh, people applying for um, the research positions like an academic professor. In terms of your health, you must be in good health, both mentally and physically, to study in Korea for the full duration of your program. Restrictions, a person who has graduated from a Korean high school or a Korean university is not eligible to apply for the scholarship. Um, a person who has graduated from an online curriculum from a Korean high school or Korean university cannot apply. A person who is currently in his or final year at a Korean university cannot apply. If you already received scholarship for a degree program from the Korean government scholarship, you are not eligible to apply. The previous GKS scholar whose scholarship was cancelled after the enrollment cannot apply either. So starting from 2025 GKS degree program, previous GKS scholar can no longer reapply for the GKS degree program. So it's important to see, it's important to note this all changes. Let's go to um, the document to submit. Uh, for the document to submit, um, you need the application form, which is already in the folder that I share the link in the description. You need a personal statement. We'll treat that very soon. You need a study plan uh, for people um, going through the research uh, program route. You need the research proposal. Um, you need one letter of recommendation, letter of invitation, also from the university if they're going through the research program route, which is not for people doing master's or PhD. You need a GK as a play can't agreement, personal medical assessment, consent to collect and use personal information, applicant parent proof of citizenship and family relationship document. Um, people might want to ask me, how do you get this? You can get this from, you know, um, commissions in your country, like ministry, for instance, in Nigeria, you can get this from the National Population Census. You need a bachelor graduation certificate or diploma. Make sure you submit a photocopy. Your certificate will not be returned. Bachelor degree transcript. You can send your official or unofficial transcript. Master's graduation certificate or diploma. Do not send your original. Master's degree transcript. Um, doctoral graduation certificate for those applying for postdoctoral research program. 
doctoral degree applicant uh, degree transcript for those applying for postdoctoral research or uh, program score report of valid topic if you have it for english proficiency test i want another certificate are attached to my publications with this then then the application passport copy so you would see um if this document is required or this documents are optional so i would encourage you to please uh, uh check this guideline properly for documentation requirement um application document for the first round of selection um you have to submit uh, your personal statements to the plan application research proposal uh, and um, personal medical assessment consent to collect and use personal information and uh, documents that do not need to be apostle or consular confirmed are uh, all forms that are filled in english or korean uh, but um, your certificate must uh, um, be apostolate or consular confirmed. So you should ask from the Korean embassy in your country how to, um, you know, um, confirm your document uh, via apostolate or consular um, related uh, issues. Document written in other language must be submitted together with a certified translation in English or Korean, must be apostolate or consular confirmed. Again, if you are submitting your transcript or your certificate, you have to um you know notarize or be apostled or consular confirmed so check the korean embassy in your country on how to um have this document consular uh confirmed in your own uh country things to note when submitting the application document all document for the first round must be submitted in english or korean each embassy or university may modify documentation requirements at their own discretion. Um, you need one letter of recommendation. Must be prepared and submitted by applicant, signed and sealed by your supervisor, dean, or professional in the field of your desired uh, study. So make sure the letter of recommendation that you would uh, collect from your supervisor is signed and sealed um, by them, either by your supervisor or lecturer's dean or professional in your field of interest so that's for the round one for the round two uh round of selection successful candidate of the first round must meet the submission requirement for the second round if any of the required documents are not submitted or if any of the application forms are submitted without applicant signature ESO application may be excluded from evaluation if a university requires additional document applicants must submit those materials directly after the university so you can see the list of document required uh submission requirement proof of citizenship certificate of graduation um academic transcript uh please ensure that your academic transcript um uh, is well um detailed and also they also noted um that a converted transcript is only valid when relevant university official confirm this document as well as a transcript converted with a conversion tool um, such as scholarly or west.org is only accepted when the relevant university officially confirm the document so please make sure your transcript indicates your cgpa as well as um you know um have your courses also detailed on your uh transcript so um let's look like Let's look at items to note an apostle or consular confirmation. Required certificate must be apostled. If your document is unable to be reissued, please keep the original and obtain an apostle. Simple photocopy or notarized copy of the apostle documents are now acceptable. If the document cannot be apostled or confirmed, um, applicant must obtain a certified true copy from the apostle issuing government authority or from the Korean embassy on a notarized uh, copy. So let's go to the selection procedure. Uh, the embassy track, you have the first round of selection. You submit your document to the embassy, the first round of selection. Afterwards, we have the recommendation of candidates to NIED. And then um, when the application of the document uh, arrive at NIED, we have the second round of selection and the third round of selection for the embassy candidates and the final stage. For the university, we have the first round of selection, the school select, and then there is a recommendation of candidates to NIID by the university, and then it arrives at NIID. We have the second round of selection, and then it goes to the final round of selection. So there is no third round of selection for 
uh, the university route. And so for the application deadline for uh, embassy track, the first round of selection will be February to March. Um, then we have recommendation to NID early April, then second round of selection late April, and the third round of selection late May. And you should get your final results uh, late by the late uh, by late June for university track. The application opens from February to April, depending on the institution. Um, they recommend to NID late April. Uh, the second round of selection will be late May. Um, there's no third round of selection, and you get your final results if you apply to the university at uh, late uh, June. So you can also see the uh, selection deadline, the timeline here, which you can um, use this to plan your applications and expected um, outcome. So how do they uh, evaluate candidates for the scholarship? Um, you can check um, on this on the stage. Um, for instance, um, each university would um, tell you the application period. Uh, could be from, you know, today the 8th of february to the end of march but you should um actually find out um from each university when the deadline is uh, i would also show you a folder uh to get uh, the list of the university um items to note when filling out the application form you must put the official name of the university you're applying to um your name must um match the one on your passport your english name must match the one on your passport you must uh, check the completeness and authenticity of all the documents uh, that you are submitting that is for both university and the embassy track for the embassy track um, embassy track applicant must check the following when filling in desired university you can choose up to three university like i said earlier and then you can choose three different departments from a single university of the choosing university at least one university must be from type b um, if you fill out a type b university in a type b section your application may be excluded uh, from the evaluation so it's important to note that um if applicant choose all three university among highly competitive university even if you pass the second round of selection some can fail uh, from all three university in your final round so that you uh, kind of pick you know three universities and you think you can get into the three of them it's possible that um you know after uh the second round you can still fill the third round in all of this university uh selection so it's important to note which university you want to choose possibly you have a supporting document from a professor which might also make a difference for the university track you can only list one university on your application so for evaluation um your or the committee would you know conduct a uh, document examination your citizenship your level of education your grades the cgpa and verify whether you're qualified for the program and then competency they will evaluate you based on competency through document examination and oral interview for instance they have a phone call um you know uh, there's no second round there's no interview in the second round of uh, the selection for the nid um, in both the embassy and the university track, if any vacancy occur in the second round of selection um, due to insufficient number of recommended candidates or due to candidate ineligibility, um, candidates from other countries can be uh, considered. And if necessary, an ID might also check about a fact within your materials to relevant governments and university. They might actually reach out to your university to confirm, you know, the authenticity of your document. Um, you can get additional points if you already are topic level three um, or above. Will give you like additional points, ten percent of the total allocated points. And if you are direct descendant of Korean War veteran, you can get additional five point of the total score. Um, so basically, um, this there is a notice here saying that uh, this is effective from 2024 GKS. So you will receive additional points based on language uh, proficiency. So if you have ILTS 8.0 and above, you could get um, up to 9%, um, 7.0 and above up to 8%, 6.0 and above up to 70%, 5.0 and above up to 60 uh, percent so um you can also check the evaluation preference of our of a sync korean with no korean citizenship applicant from low middle income countries you can capture this in your personal statement um applicants who apply for a natural science and engineering department in a regional typical or uh, type b university you there's an evaluation preference for you uh, if you have a high score in topic TOEFL, ilts you can also be much 
preferred for the length of the program I mentioned in earlier, um, remember for masters, you would be required to take one year of a Korean language program. If you don't have at least um, topic uh, uh, level uh, six, you would have to take one year of Korean language program plus two years of your degree program for your doc for doctorate degree, one year of Korean language program plus three years of degree program for research program, six months or one year for global network program within two years, uh, master's degree program within two years. Uh, it's important to note this regarding the scholarship program um, research and global network program scholars uh, who obtain topic level five or six will be exempt um, from a Korean language program those who receive topic level five or six within the six month of the Korean language will be exempt from the remaining six months so if you start a language program and you have a topic level um, five or six um, you will be excluded uh, for the remaining six months of the program and you can just um, you know translate to grad school Let's look at the benefit of the scholarship um, for every scholar from master's or PhD research program. Your here fee is covered, your tuition is covered, your Korean language training fee is covered and monthly stipend is also provided for you. So you don't have to stress yourself. Um, you know, the study incentive includes um, the settlement allowance, monthly allowance, research allowance, career proficiency grant topic, application fee, degree completion grants, medical insurance, and you know, publication of uh, printing fee. And um, GK scholars who will be initially exempted, um, you know, from the Korean language with topic five or six will be given pro Korean proficiency grants, oh my God, automatically, except for the GK scholar in the Global Network program. So, important notes regarding the scholarship benefit. If you withdraw from the scholarship within the first three months after your enrollment to the, to the university, you must return the full scholarship amount that you receive. And if three months has passed since entering Korea and your status changes, part of the already paid scholarship can be refunded or be deducted from the next payment. And um, the Korean language training fee and Korean proficiency grant are not provided to GK scholars in the research program. And lastly, Korean language training fee is not provided to GK scholars in global network or uh, program. There are contact information of uh, different Korean embassies um, here. Um, there are contact information of, of different Korean embassy at uh, Appendix B, uh, Korean University uh, Appendix C, and GK Center. And you can have the uh, Korean language education and YouTube Instagram page. For the GPA, GPA conversion scale, you can also check out the GPA conversion scale if you made up to 80%, um, for 5.0, um, 3.23, uh, it's 80%, uh, which is the minimum requirement for the scholarship. Like I mentioned earlier, the scholarship is pretty competitive, so you do want to um, make your choice properly. So you can have a list of uh, Korean embassies here across the globe you can give them a call to find out how to um, notarize your document to how to confirm your document uh, by the consular so let's talk about uh, the application document um, we have all our appendix here the faq if you're interested in the faq please you can check out uh, this page uh, for uh, the faq Let's take a look at uh, the application uh, form for the Korean Government uh, Scholarship, the 2024 uh, Global Korean Scholarship for the Graduate uh, Degree Program. So um, you have to select uh, this box, either you're applying to the embassy or you are applying uh, to the university track. Remember, you cannot apply to the university and the embassy track concurrently. For the embassy track, you can apply to up to three university, but for the university track, you need to select just one university from the list of universities on this GKS scholarship. Insert the name of institution, write the name of institution receiving application, uh, receiving application, maybe uh, the current embassy or a particular university in South Korea. Your name, your family name, given the middle name, must be written. Um, country of citizenship, make sure uh, you write the country of your citizenship. And then you have a um, list of documents, a uh, checklist of documents here. The first one is the application form itself. Items marked in red are required for all applicants. So make sure you do not omit. Uh, remember, either select embassy 
uh, route or select the university route. Don't select the two. Um, select from one program with a general overseas Korean international reconstruction talent Ukraine or the university track as well. Select whether general RGKS or RD research or global or network. So you can see the difference between this uh, different categories are in the guideline, like I mentioned earlier. The degree program you're applying for are uh, two, either you're applying for bachelor degree or you're, sorry, either you're applying, okay, the next is the degree program to apply, um, either master's or doctorate degree, PhD or research. And then the next one is desired field of study division, either liberal arts or arts and sport or engineering, social sciences, education, artificial intelligence, AI, natural science, or medicine. So if you're in, in microbiology or biochemistry, it would be natural science, social science would be like economics, um, you know, political science for those in literature and communication will be arts, engineering, or you know, um, mechanical, electrical, civil engineering, those will fall under engineering, liberal arts, you will see this um, under each of those institutions, um, they are always well detailed. And if you have additional questions, they also have a contact person in each of those institutions you can reach out to. Information for the applicant, your family name, your given name, your middle name, um, your date of birth, your gender, your citizenship, if you are from Korean, um, either indicate yes or no. Your applicant's uh, parents' information, uh, yes or no, if any of your parents is from Korea. Uh, please either click yes or no. Current or previous GKS scholar, if you've ever won the GKS scholarship, please select yes or no. Your contact information, um, your address, more like um, your mailing address, office mail, maybe your house address, your phone number, your email, make sure it's a functional email address. And then the choice of institutions for embassy track, you have three institutions you can select from, department, field of study, and for the university track, you have just one university you can select from, indicate the field of study, department, and if there's any other like major or minor, you can put it there. If you have language ability such as topic or ILTS, please enter because it has additional point. Um, level of education, high school required for all applicants, your high school, your lo location, the year you graduated from high school. Um, bachelor's degree is required for all applicants, master's, PhD, or research, um, your university name, the location of the country, the major, the day you graduated, um, your thesis, degree thesis title, like your project thesis title. If you've published books or research papers, make sure you attach them. Um, you know. It, make sure you mention them you can also attach them as an additional document um for um people applying uh, for doctoral program um you need to enter your master's degree uh the university name the location the major the date you were graduate you were uh, awarded the degree uh, the date you awarded the degree or uh, the degree thesis title published books um if you're applying for postdoctoral research program uh, university name, location, major, the date your doctoral degree was awarded, dissertation, title, publication, books. And the eighth uh, item is the cumulative CGPA. So you want to check out your CGPA, um, you know, indicate on your original transcript, uh, you know, indicate what is there, convert the CGPA uh, required for relevant applicant must be confirmed by the university. So maybe you want to convert it on a hundred scale. You can also check this call percentile if your transcript does not have a score percentile refer to appendix a gpa conversion scale to convert a gpa into 100 points so like for instance 3.23 over 5 is like 80 percent so ensure you put your cgpa here and also have the converted cgpa could also be here and then you have the uh, percentile as well are uh, there so GPA indicated on the academic transcript on the previous program degree, uh, for instance, your first year, second year, third year, fourth year for bachelor, make sure you put uh, the GPA and you can also have grades or rank. If you've ever had received scholarship from Korean government, indicate the sponsor, the name of the scholarship and the period. If you've ever visited Korea, maybe like you had a visitant visa for tourism, ensure you have it um, written out. And if you don't, you can also put are not applicable. So for the personal statement, please type in Korean and English. The essay must be single space within three pages, not more than three pages. Within the Fun uh, Times News Roman 11, 
you can include the following items in your essay delete this part um you know before submitting your application motivation which you apply for this program maybe you fell in love with korean language or korean drama when you were young your education background or for instance your tests like your tests title um perhaps the courses you took significant experience you've had like hands-on um, leadership experience. I indicated leadership experience and my hands on then, you know, working in the lab. Um, personal events that have had a significant influence on you. Maybe there's a personal event you, you had, maybe connected to Korea or personal events like, you know, life events that kind of inspired you to study the major. And if you've received any award publication you've made, skills you've acquired, please indicate it. Um, so it's also recommended to submit a supplementary document that can, that can prove what you've described in the personal statement. For instance, you have awards, you have publications, you can submit this document, um, you know, um, photocopies without authentication. It's uh, pretty fine. So make sure you write your personal statement here. It can be extended to uh, three uh, pages. Make sure you also put the year, the month, the dates, the full name, your full name and your signature. The fun three is the study plan. So here you would have to put your language study plan. Um, what are the plans you have to improve Korean language ability um, for taking your degree course? Maybe you started learning from using Duolingo and when you get a career, you would have to um, have a network of friends, Koreans that would help you to improve your speaking and writing as well. Um, so you want to um, exhibit or write um, plans to improve Korean or English language proficiency, um, you know, before and after you come to Korea. Goal of your study and study plan. If you have a research um, topic, you can just mention it, like objectives, um, contribution to knowledge, um, um, what this study um, would um, help to kind of solve if you have a particular problem statement. So that is why I always encourage you might have to reach out to a professor in Korea to uh, guide you in writing your goal of study and study plan. Then future plan after studying Korea, maybe um, you want to go to another country for your PhD after you finish the GKS. For me, I mentioned I was going to go back to my home country. So you want to have a strong point to convince them to give you uh, this uh, scholarship. So again, you have to put the date, the applicant full name and the signature. The form four might not be applicable to a whole lot of people applying for PhD and masters. Uh, this is basically for people applying, you know, um, for the research, uh, you know, proposal, um, research program part. So uh, research topic, um, you know, objectives, research plan, research methodology, expected result of the research and research timeline must be stated. For the form five, which is the recommendation letter, you have to um, have to write your name here, the program you're applying for, um, intended major, and this other part must be uh, completed by your recommender. They must um, evaluate your personal qualities, such as ability to work independently in a team, intelligence, aptitude and attitude, your potential, your future contribution, cultural adaptation. Um, this letter must be, um, you know, um, in their own recommendation letter templates and they can attach it to this form. Remember the form has to be in an envelope which is signed and sealed and the recommender's name must be there, affiliation institution, affiliated institution, um, affiliated institution. The recommender's name must be well spelled, affiliated institution, position, email, phone, and then your run across the back flip before returning the back to uh, the applicant. So note that for the university track, one letter of recommendation is required, but for the embassy track, four letters of recommendation is required for you, from you and the recommender signs here, and the date is also um, indicated. Letter of invitation is not applicable for those applying for master's and PhD, program you have an agreement here which you have to read and sign and also passing the medical assessment you have to also indicate yes or no if you have allergies if you have diabetes um, if you have physical di disability um, you have to click yes or no sign and also there's a consent to collect and use personal information um, agree or disagree and that is the end of the application um, document. So again, ensure that you fill this form properly. This form is also in the folder. So I've talked about the eligibility criteria for the GKS scholarship, the quota system, 
um, you know, the preference for natural science, as well as if you have IELTS as a topic or TOEFL. I've also mentioned how to apply via the university or the embassy route. And, you know, in the description section, you can find a folder of all the universities on the scholarship. You can check any of those folders to uh, further check how the PDF, maybe you want to contact them, you want to find the requirements. And that would give you a better perspective on which university or which route to um, apply uh, to. We have a masterclass coming up in April. If you're interested in securing a scholarship in 2024, it's a full packed um, you know, masterclass, three days, um, intensive masterclass. We had the first one in February and it was really fantastic. So if you want to know how to secure scholarships in 2024, irrespective of your um, grade, first class two and third class two, two, I uh, would encourage you to join uh, that uh, masterclass. After the masterclass, we onboard our participant to a telegram group where I personally uh, mentor them. So I want to wish you all the best as you're applying for the Korean government scholarship. And then um, we're having a YouTube live on Saturday with the current GKS scholar. Bring your questions. I was also a former GKS scholar. Would love to answer your question. Until I see you the next time, have a wonderful time applying for those scholarships out there. And if you have additional questions, please you know, drop it in the comment section, like this video, you know, um, subscribe as well as share with your friend. Bye for now.